Do people generally mind when they see like equipment in the frame? I mean, I think ideally it's not in there, but I see so many like commentary videos where you can see their equipment and it doesn't bother me when I watch them. So let me know if this is uh, too distracting for you. This isn't permanent. Again, still working on the setup, but we got a pop screen and a nicer mic and I'm working on it. So today we're going to be talking about the Twilight Zone and no, not the classic famous Twilight Zone. Today we're gonna to talk about what I consider to be the best episodes of the reboot. This of course aired on CBS All Access, which is now Paramount Plus. So I'll be referring to it from here on out as Paramount Plus. The first season was released over over a period of 10 weeks in 2019 and the second season all 10 episodes were released all at once on June 25th of 2020. Jordan Peele of course stars as the narrator in this reboot as well as an executive producer through Monkey Paw Productions. And if you haven't heard yet the show is canceled after two seasons. I think they just recently announced this cancellation and it was after I'd planned on making this video anyway, but I figured it's still relevant. Still, I think people need to talk about it even though technically it's now a canceled show. I think the first two seasons are great and we need to talk about the best episodes of them. So technically this video has the three best episodes from season one and the three best episodes from season two. I did not intend on that. Originally this five list was three from one, two from two, but it's three from three, three, hmm, my gosh, three from each of them. I'll tell you which three are the best. <laughs> there are, of course, plenty of odes to the original Twilight Zone and a lot of Easter eggs throughout to other episodes within the series. So if you're paying attention, there's a lot of little things to catch and like notice. Also, although this series is filmed in color, Paramount Plus actually gives you the option to watch this series in black and white, like the traditional Twilight Zone. And there are indeed episodes where this is highly beneficial and I think required for some of them. And I will tell you the one specifically in this video that you have to watch in black and white. Also, the casting is really great. There's a lot of familiar faces in this series that you'd recognize. So I was really surprised that one, it was canceled at all. And two, that no one talks about this show. I know it's not like a traditional horror show, but the Twilight Zone can be very horrifying as we know. And people just aren't talking about how good it is. And we need to have that conversation today. I think part of the reason why it is canceled is the streaming platform that it's on. I think if it was on a Netflix or an HBO Max or something like that, it might be a little bit more mainstream and we'd see more people talking about it. But because it was on CBS slash Paramount Plus, I feel like that's not a platform that a lot of people have. I have had it my whole life pretty much. I've had it for years and years because of Big Brother. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you don't sleep on the reboot. And if you only wanna watch the best ones and you don't have time for 20 episodes, I got you. All right, so starting with the first episode, this is from season one, episode one. They started off with a banger, and that is The Comedian. Starring Camille Nanjiani, this follows a struggling comedian who runs into famous comedian J.C. Wheeler, who is played by Tracy Morgan, who advises him to include a little bit of his personal life in his act. He realizes by doing this, he must make sacrifices to become the successful comedian that he and his girlfriend want him to be. This one can kind of be considered a common theme. There's another episode in season two called Ovation that kind of reminds me of this episode. However, The Comedian was done so much better. Ovation from season two is actually one of my least favorite episodes from this series. But I think the first episode was a super strong opener to the introduction of the reboot of the series. And it does focus a lot on the drama aspects and his relationship with his girlfriend. But I think that does play an integral part in the actual plot. So although I'm not typically a fan of super dramatic romance relationship type stories, I found it necessary to further the plot in this episode. It's not perfect. It's a little bit slow at times, maybe a little bit repetitive. But for the comedian, I think it was done really well. It's one of the better episodes, I would say. It's not my favorite episode by any means, but definitely deserves a spot in top five. I've watched it in black and white and color. And while I don't think that the color in which you watch it in, whether it's black and white or color, really affects this episode specifically, I did prefer it in black and white. The next episode that is one of my favorites, easily top two, I would mm, top three, I would say, is Nightmare at 30,000 Feet, which is season one, episode two. So season one really started out strong with two amazing episodes, in my opinion. And if you're a fan of the original Twilight Zone, this episode might sound a little bit familiar because there is a famous episode, episode 123, where of the original 
Twilight Zone that is called Nightmare at 20,000 Feet. So this is more of a direct ode to an original episode, but the plots are very much different. So this stars Adam Scott and follows a journalist as he boards a flight after accepting a job offer, and he discovers an MP3 player that contains a podcast of the exact flight he is on disappearing an hour after they take off. This podcast scarily predicts each event, and he tries using clues to avert the disaster. And similarly to the original story of the original uh, Nightmare at 20,000 Feet, uh, the crew and other passengers don't really believe him and just think that he's behaving erratically. So this, I would say, has a weaker ending in my opinion. However, it does make it very Twilight Zone-y. Like it's very reminiscent of classic Twilight Zone. This is one of the episodes where the pacing is actually really spot on. It doesn't take long to build up to the climax and the tension is continuously going and rising as we go throughout the episode. Like I said, with the pacing of some of the other episodes, they, the episodes range from 30 minutes to an hour. They're not a set fixed uh, amount of time that they're trying to wrap things up in. So I think some episodes feel a little bit more rushed than others, but this one definitely felt really like smooth throughout the whole thing. The climax is so worth it. I love the like beginning of the ending. The ending is still a little bit weak for me on this one, but this is definitely an episode that I would rewatch over and over and over again. So the last episode from season one that I'm going to be talking about is episode eight, Point of Origin. This by far has the best lighting in any of the episodes, and this one, it is absolutely required that you watch it in black and white. I have watched this in color and black and white, and when I tell you it is like a different episode entirely in black and white. Just, it enhances the lighting effects that they use. It makes things not as distracting. There's a lot of colors going on in this episode, so it's nice to not have any of that where your eyes aren't dancing around. You're like really focused on the character's faces, which is very important to be doing in this episode. So Point of Origin follows a wealthy socialite, Eve, whose housekeeper, Anna, is taken by ICE. Later, Eve is also taken by Homeland Security where she sees Anna and makes the realization that maybe they come from the same place after all. So the Twilight Zone does focus on a lot of social issues such as racism, immigration, fake news, but of course it also focuses on like the supernatural and alien invasions. So Point of Origin, of course, touches on the idea of immigration and does have that underlying theme throughout it. However, it also twists the idea of what it means to be an illegal alien. This has some really good twists in it and some beautiful imagery, some of the best framework and lighting I have ever seen and definitely is enhanced when you watch this in black and white. It's like you have to watch it in black and white. So now we're going to move on to the best episodes of season two and we're actually going to start with my favorite episode of all time of the reboot of Twilight Zone and that is season two episode three, The Who of You. This follows a struggling actor who gets into an argument with his girlfriend about money, so he decides to rob a bank. He makes eye contact with the teller just as the police rush in, just as they switch bodies. This also has a cameo from Billy Porter, who I know from American Horror Story. So this episode is actually only 46 minutes, but it feels like a full length feature film. Like it feels like a movie. The pacing, this has the best pacing out of any episode. You'd think it would get repetitive, and I could see if some people think that, but it is so good. The pacing and just how fast paced it actually is makes it so exciting. I don't feel like this episode was too rushed and I could never predict where the episode was going to go. Like it was just one of the most successful episodes I'd say in the reboot. You know, it didn't feel super rushed. It wasn't spoon fed to the viewer, which I find it I have a really big issue with with the reboot of Twilight Zone is some things are just directly fed to the viewer and that's just one of my pet peeves when it comes to media in general is when you have to directly tell the viewer what they're experiencing or what they're looking at. I just, I'm not a fan. And they do do that a lot in this series which is why I'm telling you the best ones to watch so you can avoid that. I mean they have less than an hour to get to the point and I know they can be successful without spoon feeding the viewer because they've done it in these six episodes. The episode that I think does is the worst is actually season two, episode seven, called A Human Face. 
they just they tell you too much like we don't need all of it it's an alien story and i understand it's like complex they want you to get it and understand the vision but we don't need you to directly tell us through one of the characters what's happening especially when you're doing a reboot of the twilight zone i feel like it's more effective to be a little bit more vague because you don't have to explain everything we understand that we're in the twilight zone not everything is going to be easily understood or realistic but anyway that's just my little rant about this uh reboot as well because it does have bad episodes i'm not gonna lie <laughs> but the who of you is hands down my favorite favorite episode of this entire series and if you watch any episode from this series watch the who of you moving on to season two episode nine this one's called try try starring topher grace a woman meets a man who seems to win her over by his seemingly miraculous abilities this was actually a really intense episode at least for me it was it made me highly uncomfortable to watch but i will say it only gets really uncomfortable or intense towards the end so you have to get through a lot of the episode before it really gets to the intensity parts. This is again an example where the pacing is not perfect on this show. However, the climax is so worth it, I think, that I had to include it in my top five because although it took a while to get there, I think it is a really good contrast to the rest of the episode. And I actually don't want to say too much about this one because I went in it not knowing anything about the plot really and I was very like uncomfortable watching it. So I feel like you need to go in a little bit blind on this one and not know much about it. Cause it definitely adds to the scare factor. Let me tell you when you don't know what is coming. I will give a slight trigger warning for this episode. However, it doesn't get too bad or anything, but I just wanted to throw that out there just in case. So next we're gonna get on to the honorable mention, which is season two, episode one, Meet in the Middle. So this stars Jimmy Simpson, who finds human connection to a voice inside his head when he discovers a telepathic link to a stranger. I think this episode so definitely deserves to be on this list and I would still highly, highly recommend it. This one was amazing. The only reason why I didn't make the top five is because I did find it a little bit repetitive. It dragged on a little bit too long, I'd say in the middle. And also the ending gets a little bit predictable because you know something's up, you know it's not what it seems to be, you know? So you're trying to guess what is going to happen in the end, and this one was pretty predictable. I still think it was a really effective episode though. The climax is still really good, and maybe more on the horror side, I would say that this episode definitely had more horror elements than maybe any of the other ones that I've talked about in this uh, video. So overall, I think Jordan Peele's narration is one of the best parts of this show. The writing is phenomenal. The, you know, intros, outros, and everything like that done by Jordan Peele Peel, or at least narrated by Jordan Peele are amazing. I love them. Are all the ideas original in this series? No, absolutely not. There are a lot of O's to past episodes of The Twilight Zone, but I think it's a breath of fresh air for The Twilight Zone, honestly. I like all the social commentary within it. Some of it is a little too on the nose for me, but I like all the subtleties in it. Obviously, Jordan Peele likes to do a lot of commentary in his work, and it definitely comes through more so, I'd say, in season one. So whether you're a fan of that or not, Season one has the most of it, so that's just, you know, in case you wanted to know. And if you've seen it, please leave your comments of what your favorite episodes are so other people can watch uh, those episodes as well, because I think we're all gonna have differing opinions. Although objectively, I think The Who of You is the best one. I'm sorry, I'm gonna say it. It's a, it might be a, an opinion, but I think I'm right in that. It's the best one. Maybe a nightmare at 30,000 feet. That's a, a close second for me. Anyway, but I hope this was helpful. I hope you check out this series on Paramount Plus. It's not sponsored, by the way. <laughs> it's, uh, I wish. Um, it's really amazing and highly, highly slept on. So please don't discredit it or disregard it any longer. Now is the, the time to watch a couple episodes of this. You don't need to watch the whole series. They're not all great. <laughs> but the ones in this video that I mentioned are hands down my favorite and the best in my opinion. Let me know if you end up watching any of these episodes and what your thoughts are on them. And I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.